Today we are working with day two of critical attributes of similar figures to determine if two shapes are similar and to find a missing side length. There are three things that similar figures must have. I will give you a minute to fill out these three things and then we will check them. Did you get that they had to be the same shape, same angles, and proportional size? If you did, great job. Figures that have similar shape, but not necessarily the same size, are called similar figures. In order to identify mathematically if two figures are similar, you must look for congruent angles, and remember that means same angles. This can be seen using lines of congruency. or angle measures. We will talk about this more when we look at example number three in the first half of our page. Another way to determine if they are similar is using ratios of corresponding size and making sure they are equivalent by checking proportionality. Let's look at a couple of examples together. Number one, we are still going to use the same process that we used yesterday where we identify triangle A and triangle B. You only need two sets of corresponding sides. Therefore, I'm going to use the short side and the long side. I know that the 10 on this triangle is the long side because it is, it is the side that is opposite of the right angle. The same is going to hold true for the larger triangle. If you have a right angle on a triangle, the side that is opposite of it is always the longest side. We actually call it the hypotenuse. You'll get more into that next year. But for now, you just need to know that the longest side is going to be diagonal or across from the right angle. We can determine if these are similar figures by setting up a proportion comparing A to B short to long. A short is 6, A long is 10, B short is 10, and B long is 26. You can cross multiply. You get 100. And then 6 times 26 is 156. Since these two are not equal, we can state that these two shapes are not similar. This proportion may look different than the one that you have on your paper. The one on your notes, I use the medium size together to determine proportionality. But if you notice, those did not show to be proportional as well. Let's see if you can do number two by yourself. Did you determine the two rectangles in number two are not similar? Good job. Let's take a look at number three. Number three has several different sides. And as we mentioned before, one of the ways that you can determine if they are similar is if looking at congruent angles. Because when you have similar shapes, all the angles must be the same. If you change one of the angles, you actually change the shape or a length of a side just a little bit. I can look at this one on shape A. I have the right angles are the same. You have one line of congruency two lines of congruency, and another right angle. Based on this, I can identify that these are similar figures. So I can state they are similar because they have all equal angles. Or I could state that because corresponding angles
are congruent. They are similar because corresponding angles are congruent. This will not hold true on all shapes because not all rectangles are all similar. Although they do all have equal angles, not all rectangles are similar. Why don't you try number four by yourself and see what you can figure out. This is a perfect example of how not all rectangles are similar. Even though all the angles are the same, it is not similar shapes. I set up my ratio for rectangle A, 3 to 9, rectangle B, 9 to 18. Cross multiply, I got 81 and 54. And since those are not equal, these rectangles are not similar. Let's flip the paper over and see if we can't find some missing side lengths. Let's look at number five. Just as we use proportion to determine if two shapes are similar, we can do the same thing to find the missing side lengths. The only difference is going to be if one of the numbers in your table will be a variable. Let's look at number five. This is actually an example of what it means to use indirect measurement. We've created a shape based on a person's height and the height of a flagpole and the shadow that they create. But we drew the last one in to make it a triangle so that you can see how similar shapes and indirect measurements can be treated the same way. I'm still going to label A and B. I'm going to label short side and long side, short side and long side. I know that this is the short side because the corresponding side on triangle B is between the one line of congruency and the right angle that is the short side. So I will name the same thing, the one line of congruency and the right angle, the short side on triangle A. But let's set up the proportion to find out just how tall Sarah is. You have triangle A, short side H. I told you, you just might have a variable. The long side is 10. Triangle B, short side is 2. And long side is 4. And what's our next step? That is correct. You are going to cross multiply. Therefore, I'm going to cross multiply 10 times 2 and get 20. Cross multiply h times 4 and get 4h. Then I need to divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient. And don't forget, the coefficient is the number that is next to the variable. So I'm going to divide by 4. And Sarah is 5 feet tall. 20 divided by 4 is 5. Let's see if you can do number 6 by yourself. This one was a little bit fun. You do have what we call embedded triangles. If you wanted to, you could have drawn this second triangle outside of the larger one and labeled it so that now you have two triangles that you might be able to see a little bit better. I did have to look at my numbers to determine if this bottom line was the short side or the line on the left was the short side. But I noticed on my bigger triangle that 20 is less than 26. Therefore, this is the short side, the 20 is the short side, the 26 is the long side, and I will label the same thing on triangle B. I set up my proportion. Cross, multiply, and divide, just like we always do. But when I divided 104 by 20, I did leave it as a fraction. If you choose to continue to divide, that is okay you will get the same equivalent answer. Do you have any questions at this time?
Let's see if you can do number seven and number eight by yourself. I would like to point out on number seven that triangle B is actually turned from triangle A. So what I did to find out the long side is I found the one that was opposite of the right angle is the long side. I know that the one to the left of the long angle is the short side. So if I start at the long angle on triangle B and go to the left around the triangle, then I know that this side is the short side. Therefore, the remaining side is going to be the medium side. Since this, these two triangles were looking for in the medium side, I decided to use the short side and the medium side to set up my proportion. And I found that the length of side length in is eight. Number eight was pretty straightforward. You can tell which one was the short side. It's the smaller number. The long side is the larger number. I labeled them A and B, set up my proportion, cross multiply, and divide. Make sure that when you are cross multiplying that you don't forget to divide by that last number to find the missing piece. Do you have any other questions at this point? Let's look at number nine. Victoria enlarges a picture with the original width of three and a half inches and length of four inches. After the enlargement, she now has a similar picture with a width of 7.7 .7 inches. What is the length of the enlarged picture? Well, I want to use original and enlarged, or I can label the original A and the enlarged B. I'm still going to set up the same proportion of A and B. I can use length and width on this one. Width and length. The width of A is 3.5. The length of A is 4. And they tell us that the width of B is 7.7, .7, and we are looking for the length. You are going to cross multiply and divide. You get three and a half times x equals 7.7 .7 times four. 7.7 .7 times four, let's see, 7.7 .7 times four, four times seven is 28. 28 times 30, looks like it's 30.8. Oh. Let's take a moment and fix that. We don't want to forget our equal sign because it will keep us from being able to solve the problem correctly. And don't forget, you always divide by the coefficient, which is the number next to the variable. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3.5. So we'll do it over here. Thirty-five does not go into three. It doesn't go into thirty, so I've got to figure out how many times it will go into three hundred and eight. I am going to start with um try eight and see how that works. That gives you forty. Eight times three is twenty-four plus four is twenty-eight. Let's see what thirty-five times nine is. That's 5, 4 is 27, 31. We are going to have to use 8. So I'm going to subtract 280. 8 minus 0 is 8. 10 minus 8 is 2. That is 28. I'm actually going to keep this one as a fraction. I just find it easier if I write 8 and 28 over 35. Um, I don't know that 28 and 35 can be simplified by any number. Let's see.
it can. Um, I believe they both have a factor of 7, so it would be 8 and 4 fifths. So we know that the length of the enlarged picture is 8 and 4 fifths. Again, I reminded you yesterday that you were still going to be using the same processes when multiplying and dividing by fractions. These are skills that will not go away. Let's look at number 10 because it is a little bit different and I want to show you how many different ways that you can write a proportion. If you notice, you have all of these proportions that you can write. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by writing the side lengths of triangle A over the side lengths of triangle B. So I'm going to start with side length A, B. These are all using letters, so I'm going to do A, B. I can go B, C, C, A. Or I think they keep them in alphabetical order and use A, C. I'm going to do the same thing for triangle B. I'm going to go D, E, and I'm going in alphabetical order. E, F, and D, F. Then I want to find the proportion that has corresponding sides in the same place. So this one has D, F, and E, F, which is right here, but it has B, C, and A, C. So whereas A is using these two and these two, these, this is not proportional. B is using B, C, and A, C for this one. So we're using these two, B, C, and A, C, and then it uses D, E, which does not correspond with B, C. Therefore, B is not the answer. C is using B, E, and E, F, which is right here. And then it uses A, B, B, C, which matches these two. Therefore, C is my answer. Another way, I would like to show you how many different ways that you can write one single proportion. I'm going to use these two ratios, A, B, B, E, B, C, E, F. And I am going to write them on a small piece of paper. Write A, B over B, E is equal to B, C over E, F. Now, I know that this, if I look at this proportion, this proportion, if I leave it over here, I'm going to make a list. I'm not going to make a list. I just want to show you that I can see that A, B over D, E is equivalent to B, C over E, F. Well, I can turn it, and you have BE over EF is going to be proportional with AB over BC. I can do the same thing if I turn it again. EF corresponds with BC. BE corresponds with AB. Turn it one last time, and I get BC corresponds with AB, and EF corresponds with DE. So if they're ever asking you to find the proportion that matches, you can write one proportion and just start turning your paper. Do you have any questions about similar figures, determining similarity, finding the missing side length, or having multiple proportions?